Of course, the main consideration is economically. When we are considering costs, we have to consider things like yield. We have to consider things like profit. We have to consider things like uh, waste. Oops. And as a consequence of all of these things, there are going to be economic factors associated with what type of chemicals, perhaps even the choice of a catalyst, whether to use one, whether the cost associated with that is actually going to be um, uh, compensated by the increase in uh, time to reach yields and so on. And of course, if the system that we're looking at is an equilibrium system, then there may be other factors that we've got to consider, such as high pressure may be a really important factor, but it might also mean high enough pressure may increase uh, the risk associated with safe practice. So each of these um, different processes needs to be looked at in a, a quite comprehensive way for us to be able to analyze a range of different factors associated with different chemical processes. There are always going to be four, often, four key considerations that we're going to need to think about whenever we are looking at any chemical process. So again, I want you to think about the fact that we're going to look at a number of chemical processes or reactions, some of which have commercial implications, many of which will actually, and Consider these from all the key aspects that we have, particularly in relation to these four key factors. So the first one is always chemical, and chemicals are often related to yield, which is often related to reaction conditions. So if our goal is to maximize yield, then we want to have a look at the reaction conditions, make sure that we think about things like pressure, make sure we think about things like temperature, uh, make sure we look at our, uh, how we obtain our reactants, how we uh, might dispose of products. It may well be that we have a product that is desired, but we might also have a, a byproduct or a waste product that we don't desire. What are we going to do with that? How are we going to deal with that? Uh, and so on. How are we going to balance all of these things? And of course, um, it keep uh, people safe that are working on industrial sites. As I mentioned in the previous video, environmental is important. We, we need to be very aware about pollutants that are going into both our air and also into our water. Sometimes heat is as much a problem as the specific chemicals themselves. So if we're releasing uh, carbon as a result of incomplete combustion, that's a problem. If we're releasing heavy metals into our waterways, um, that's a problem. And sometimes just thermal pollution as we use hot water uh, to generate electricity, for example, may also find its way back into the atmosphere or into the waterways. And that too can just change the balance in different ecosystems, particularly um, because this often affects uh, the uh, plants and animals in a particular area. Economic is also an important factor because here we're trying to maximize profit. And if we're trying to maximize profit, then we want high yield and low cost. And so there are a number of different decisions that may have to be made around um, increasing our yields, but without um, having our costs spiral out. Socio-cultural is often uh, linked back to the environment, so this may be the um, local society that's living in an area around an industrial site, for example. It may be something that has global implications. It may be uh, chemicals in the soils. 
It may be something that is in the waterways. Maybe it's something we specifically added. So, for example, if we look again at the example that we had for the um, water treatment, part of what we do with uh, water treatment for drinking water is to actually put things in there for the benefit of people, such as uh, fluorides. Uh, or chlorides, either for dental health or to kill microorganisms that would have a negative impact on the people who are drinking the water. So these are all the different factors that we want to consider when we are looking at monitoring reactions and especially when we're looking at monitoring the environment to see what sort of impact our chemical processes are having on the environment. We're going to look at three different areas when we look through this topic, one of which is looking very much at our waterways and the different um, uh, ions that are present in water. Another is looking at our organic compounds and how we can identify different organic groups. And then we'll put everything together at the end to um, have a look at a few case studies where each of these factors we can pull out in a bit more specific detail. So I hope this has been a good little overview. There's certainly a lot more specific detail to come. Thanks for watching.